Somebody gives you a million dollars, you have five seconds to answer this question. Fly quest or the field in playoffs. The regular season of the LCS is in the books. Best of ones are potentially done forever. No, that's not a guarantee. I'm just pleading with Mark Z. Please, no more best of ones. Please, let's go to best of threes. But regardless, let's get into the pit playoff edition. Before we get into playoffs and the matchups and the excitement that comes with that, we do have two teams that we have to say goodbye to as their season has ended. So let's kick off the memorial. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. First up, in our eighth place team of the splits, after losing their Friday game to 100 Thieves, where they notably had like a 5k gold lead and then chucked it, well, they. I mean, they chucked it, but 100 Thieves really did kind of earn the win. Yes, I'm biased in saying that, but still. It unfortunately sealed their fate, which meant that their final two games of the week had no relevancy whatsoever other than to play spoiler for other people, which they did. They, of course, like the matchup that you expect Cloud9 to drop is the one where the team that they're playing against has nothing to lose and Cloud9 has like everything on the line. For some reason, it's just a historical trend that they drop these games, and they did. Cloud9 lost to Immortals, Immortals was able to block them from being able to climb up the second seed, which ultimately didn't really matter all that much because they wouldn't have been able to catch FlyQuest regardless. But it was interesting to note, they did go on to lose their final game of the split against Team Liquid, I believe? Actually, I don't quite remember. Regardless, their split as a whole was kind of marred by inconsistencies. They were seen as this team that was apparently really good in scrims, but it never translated on stage. They'd have a few moments where you think, man, some of these players came along. Castle had his moments where he looked decent. Mask, I think, was very iffy throughout the entire year. Armeo didn't really have it at most points. It seemed like they were just disgrunt or disjointed as a team. But I do think Tactical and Ole were still a bright spot. There were so many games, including in the final week, including against 100 Thieves and other spots, where it's like Tactical and Ole would come out of lane 4, 5, and 0, oh, and then you just, like, they lose it from there and it's just like coordination was a clear problem and I don't know what you do to fix that if that's maybe one individual player on the team too many voices in the kitchen or I, I don't know but they gotta solve it because apparently if it's working in scrims and they get on stage somebody's got stage fright or somebody's not able to communicate in the same way that they are in scrim with the lights and the cameras and everything else on them so when I heard the comments a week ago about how like oh you know I, certain players really enjoyed playing without fans during that one week that that they were in the cage bash thing my first thought immediately went to immortals but might have been somebody else regardless their season is done the second and the one that i think a lot of people were actually sad to see go is shopify rebellion they had a chance to qualify on the final day all they had to do was beat cloud nine and they potentially caused a tiebreaker but they were not able to do so, and it sealed the fate. Similar thing for Immortals. I don't leave the split for Shopify with the feeling that, like, they massively are separated from, you know, the bottom three or four teams in the league. I don't think they're on FlyQuest or 100 Thieves level towards the top of the standings, but they were pretty close to NRG and Dig. B-Boy, a very clear bright spot on this roster. Insanity is still really fun to watch with, with the diversity of champion picks that he has. Zazel and support was meh, but I mean, the, the lane that I'm looking at the most is top lane in Fake God. I can't remember a single matchup where Fake God like got on stage and was able to actually do something uh, massively impactful for this team, at least on a consistent basis. He'd have one-off games where he was able to keep up with people, but there was never a time where like he just went up and smashed. And it's a really big blow to his stock, which I'm not sure if they'll replace him for the upcoming year. There was conversations obviously around Licorice trying to come into the LCS in some capacity. He still wants to play. The question is, would you go to a team like Shopify? Maybe. But if you're a fake god, I hate to like really be critical of players here, and I feel bad saying this, but like this is now his, what, second or third chance on this stage? And we heard early rumblings that, again, he was really good in scrims and smashing, but then he gets on stage and it's not the same guy. He's not able to live up to those moments. And when you have Sniper coming in, who Fake God was able to beat pretty handedly whenever they were both down in Academy, but now you have Sniper taking on and beating almost every top lane player in the league, barring Bwipo, and Fake God is nowhere close to that same level it's like it's night and day he, he's got some stage fright issues that he's got to get over or even if it's not stage fright he's just got to get over whatever's ailing him in the lcs level because clearly he's got enough to do it in academy just not at this stage we'll see what shopify decides to do in the off season i don't know 
There's really nothing else that I want to touch on specifically from Super Week, so let's talk about some LCS news surrounding the league in general. First and foremost, all pro and MVP ballots are officially locked. They were due uh, at the time of filming this on Wednesday for you guys watching it the day prior. I'm happy to announce that I am again voting for all pro and MVP. I got the notification uh, early last week. So I can't unfortunately touch on anything there. That will be its own individual episode of the pit and its own video whenever everything comes out. I'm gonna save it for when uh, MVP is released. I know all pro and MVP get released on different times. I'm just gonna save it all till the end and make one massive video on why I picked the people that I did for specific things. I've been listening to the community talk about this for a bit, and it should be a fun conversation. The LCS has announced their Fan Fest for finals, which in case you need a reminder, is on Easter weekend and at the LCS studio. So they're setting up an outdoor viewing area where Medios and somebody else are both gonna be uh, commentating the watch party outside of the venue as tickets are already sold out for inside itself. If you're in the area and wanna have fun and have a free experience, go. It's gonna be a good time. Again, for those outside of LA, if you're on the East Coast and like Washington, New York area, again, we are having a watch party here in New York City at Legends, it's right next to the Empire State Building. I will keep preaching, please come. If you can reserve a ticket on the Eventbrite, which I'll have linked down in the description below, that'd be great. It's just a good uh, estimate for headcount, even though we can obviously account for everybody. I'm hoping to get 100 people. That would be great. So bring your friends, bring your family, because it is Easter, so I get it. And just come and have a good time. If you've never watched a live sporting event at a bar, uh, you really should. Trust me, it's a lot of fun. And finally, in case you missed the LCS broadcast, uh, yeah, uh, the playoff schedule itself is a little bit wonky. We have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday matches the first week. Friday, Saturday matches the next one. I think to prevent a conflict with uh, Valorant Masters Madrid. I don't know. There, there's no other explanation as to why you don't have it Saturday, Sunday like you had the entire regular season. And then we go back to Saturday, Sunday for finals weekend. So like I... I don't get the scheduling. Why are we constantly shifting the days? Like, even when the NFL goes to playoffs, yes, you have, like, those Friday, Saturday, or sorry, the Saturday, Sunday, Monday games uh, as you stretch six games over that period of time and, like, separate them out. But it's like, we're at, by that point, we're all used to having NFL games on that time because college football ends, so the NFL slots in the Saturdays. And it's like, okay, well, this all makes sense. This LCS schedule does not, and I don't get it, I don't know why like it, this feels so counterintuitive to the viewing experience and trying to keep consistent patterns. But alas, I digress, nothing we can do about it. Now, let's get into playoffs. This is the entire bracket, and I'm going to walk you through my entire prediction and how I think this whole bracket is going to go after my special guest, Rafa. Yes, LCS caster Rafa walks through his. Somebody gives you a million dollars, you have five seconds to answer this question. FlyQuest or the field in playoffs? FlyQuest or what? The field. Everybody else. Oh, so like who wins playoffs? Who Fly, wins? FlyQuest or anyone yep. anyone else? One, Ooh, two, I think it's, three. I think it's the field. I think it's the field. Okay. There's, there, there's so many more possibilities of FlyQuest being upset in the finals than it's just FlyQuest beating everyone else. That's, I mean, they're your number one seed, but I wanted to see your faith in them as a number one seed. Do you actually like have faith that they will go all the way? And that whenever you put that level of scrutiny on it, it changes the perspective a little bit. Yeah, because like we saw from this regular season that the teams are so competitive that anything can happen. And this is just a result of best of ones. What happens when you get into best of fives, you know? Like, do you see, like, an elevated form of teams that have been slumping? Or do you see teams being unlocked even further now that they are in best of fives, right? Let, we don't know. So everybody wants to point to NRG last split as, like, the clear example of you never know what's going to happen. Is yes or no, was NRG not an exaggeration of the good? The things that we saw good from them in the regular season of them beating all the top teams just happened to a greater extent in playoffs. But on the flip side of that, you saw a team like 100 Thieves, who on the bad side of it were over reliant on a specific type of drafting, got abused for it very quickly. Yeah. I think Energy's case last summer was a bunch of variables happening 
all at the right time than it needed to. I think during, because the regular season, Energy performed, I think, similar record to where they ended this recent split. I would have to double check the numbers, but I remember yeah. when we were like talking about stuff, it's like, oh, hey, it's actually not that different from summer split. Playoffs, and then they had the miracle run, right? And so it was in playoffs where Dokla was able to correct a lot of his form and started playing like a top three top laner and eventually was able to beast through every single top laner that beat him in the regular season uh, records. So like he was able to get through Licorice, he was able to get through Summit, and he was able to get through Fudge, right? Uh, so Dokla showing up in finals weekend was huge for the team. Uh, FBI and Ignar also were just far more consistent than they were during the regular season. I think the only two people that kind of had similar showings throughout the entire summer regular season was Pal Fox and Contracts. Contracts would just have those big moments where he just yeah. is the best jungler in the entire region. And Pal Fox probably had his best split, which is why it's such a damn shame that he didn't get on all pro in summer. I I personally put hey, him in so third all I. pro. Can't, can't yeah. blame that one on me. Yeah. So it's it's that's because now this ring split, this is probably one of Pal Fox's worst splits yeah. that he's had in uh in recent memory which you know kind of blows but you know it, that's why i said the field versus the fly quest because you know if energy are can correct that in playoffs then it doesn't matter what happened in the regular season you know? uh, so we're gonna put that to the direct test we're running through the entire playoff bracket and getting your predictions for each and every matchup as it goes yeah uh thir 30 second explanation on why you pick something because we got to get through the entire one but i'll okay. kick it off with fly quest tl all right. I think FlyQuest TL, I'm actually casting this one. And so I'm Ooh. projecting this to be a 3 1 for FlyQuest. I think Team Liquid actually has some really clean macro. And uh, when it comes to mid game and late game, when Impact is freed up on the sidelines, he can actually give the team some, some of the best macro in the game. But APA and Yawn need to uh, ensure that they are not liabilities for the game i think yawn has actually been less of a liability for the team and it's Great. only been when they focus him down i i understand you're trying to like go through the rest no so let you're me just, good uh, you're good go ahead. Yeah. uh so yeah just three one i think FlyQuest, much more consistent team overall team liquid macro will get them one game definitely for sure um so FlyQuest will move up to the upper bracket they'll guarantee themselves finals weekend uh, 100 Thief C9, I'm going to give it to 100 Thieves. I I think C9 will not bounce back until the lower bracket. But I think 100 Thieves will move on and carry this momentum forward. So then, um, so then it's Team Liquid versus Dig. Yep, TL versus bracket. Dig. Oh, oh, it's so tough. Um, I'll pussy out and just say a 3-2. And I'll say it ends up being Team Liquid on the day. Although I genuinely think that Tomo and Isles have been so underrated as a bot lane. Uh, and they've been like low key pretty darn good. Um, so I think that, that they're like a point of contention. Um, hey. And I think, yeah. I would, love to, I would love to agree with that comment, but I can't say anything due to all pro. Sure, 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 sure. Um, we'll have to talk about that after. Um, yep. Anyway, uh, so I, I'll say TL3-2 over Dig. Um, Energy C9, I think C9 will beat Energy, but that will also be a banger series. I think that's going to be a 3-2. Energy is going to like finally show up, but it's a little too late, and uh, C9 will move on, and so then we'll have TL versus C9 in the lower bracket. This one gets you into finals weekend. Uh, I think C9 will win that uh, three zero. And Ooh. that is where that one's going to be just like a straight up body bag where uh, Jojo is just going to be APA's father in that series. Like okay. fair. I, I think, I think the laning discrepancy and it will be so massive in that particular matchup that it will not matter for 
uh, the rest of the matches. But the only reason why I take 100 Thieves over C9 earlier is because I think Quid has been so fucking impressive that I think he stands up to JoJo. And JoJo cannot like carry C9 over that, you know? What about Quid so carrying JoJo or Quid carrying 100 Thieves over FlyQuest? That is probably the hardest series to determine because regular season record, it was a 2-0, and both of those games, it was not even close. They both targeted Sniper and played through topside, shut him down early, and even though River was trying to find very creative answers towards the bottom side of the map or even tried to bail Sniper out, uh, it, it wasn't enough to overcorrect it. Once Whippo gets going for FlyQuest, I think it's a very similar uh, look for Team Liquid. When Impact gets going, he's able to like free up the rest of the map and like dictate where they need to go. Same thing for FlyQuest because I think they're I think the weakness that you have to attack on FlyQuest as Hundred Thieves is actually play towards bottom side of the map. And I will say this will be a three. Oh. I know you want to say it. Just say it. Yeah, it, it's it's gonna be like a three one three two fly quest, and I think the one win or two is gonna be a case where hundred thieves plays heavily towards bot side. They snowball Michanela, so they bypass the laning phase, which I think is where that bot lane struggles the most. You get them to the point of the game where they can just team fight, and that's where they're actually really competent and meach has in pretty insane positioning for a, a rookie marksman so then um, really quickly results yeah. only cloud yeah. nine versus hundred thieves to go to msi <laughs> i shall say you know what i'm, I'm selling out hundred thieves beat c9 Three two, and then they, does Hundred Thieves win the rematch? Only in the rematch, yes. They are gonna they're gonna get the Cinderella story. Oh, grand yep. finals comes around. Hundred Thieves. 3-0 fly quest they'll figure out the the method the formula some like this shit happens in every finals or multiple finals over the years where you're like oh there's no way that evil geniuses beats 100 thieves there's no way that eg beats team liquid and then something happens on the day of and the whole team just tilts and it is irreversible I am personally happy that FlyQuest was able to retain their number one seed at the end of this weekend. As much as I wanted as a 100 Thieves fan for us to get to that one spot, I feel like these matchups are honestly better week one than have we had FlyQuest versus C9. I do like the fact that 100 Thieves has to play them to prove their validity as a contender in this league. Everybody's calling them best of one merchants. We will see in this series. I spent almost 20 minutes talking about just this series, just Cloud9 versus 100 Thieves. I put out hype videos on it. Obviously, I'm excited, so I'm not gonna double up information here. So if you want all that, check that out. FlyQuest versus Team Liquid. I think everybody and their mother is writing off Team Liquid on this series. They're saying that FlyQuest is just gonna beat them, and I, I can't fully disagree, but I do think it's gonna be closer than people were making it out to be. We've seen Team Liquid in best of fives. They were literally one game away from beating NRG last playoffs had Summit not ran it down on that final play of the final Gnar thing in mid lane where he just gets killed and it's like, oh, oh man. This team always does a good job of bouncing back from their woes in best of fives because they do make a lot of individual mistakes, but I think that actually will help them a lot in a BO5 series. They are aggressive. They will take some fights that other teams won't. They will push up farther sometimes than they should. But personally, I think this is actually gonna be a really good series. I think Whippo 
and Impact. We've seen it before. I think the two of them are pretty much even, and Impact is going to play to nullify the lane. Whippo will try to take over the game unless they're actually investing resources into Jensen, but it seems like Whippo this entire time has constantly been taking counter pick top lane and just smashing people and dominating lanes, but he notably hasn't looked as strong as he did at the beginning of the year. So overall, I do favor Whippo slightly, but I definitely think this is more even than people give credit for. Jungle, uh, no, Inspired is currently better than Umpty by a healthy margin. Inspired is an MVP candidate for a lot of people, and at times whenever their bot lane would kind of run it down, he would be the reason why they would ultimately bounce back. For TL, you'd have the bot lane kind of have their issues as well, but he wasn't able to do the same level of thing. So uh, in, in this regard, I give a slight advantage to Inspired. Not a massive one, but still notable to call out. In mid lane, it's a pretty big canyon, if we're being honest. Jensen is a top three mid in this league. APA probably bottom three at the current moment. That's not saying that APA can't step up and have these moments where he does pop off in series. He could. This is a guy that has not reached his full potential in his, like, the ultimate level of consistency that we want to see from him if he's going to become a top tier player in this league. But Jensen has just been on fire, man. It's not like he's playing this hyper-aggressive picks that are like absolutely dominating and lame, but then he walks out of the game. Uh, there was the Tristana game where he's like 12-0 uh, like or something like that. There was an Oriana game where he's deathless. I mean, Jensen's just looked good. Really good. He nullifies lane, he comes out, and he's a monster in team fights. What more can you ask for from the guy? Heavy favorites in mid lane for Fl FlyQuest. Bot lane is the question mark, though. Busio and Masu can just take over games and then also run it down as well. Like, it is, you're flipping a coin at the beginning of the series and you don't know how it's going to turn out. If it turns out great, fine. If not, Inspired and Jensen have a lot more work to do. And the thing is that if they coin flip tails, Yawn and Core JJ are two players that, at least in lane, can stomp them out pretty hard. Yawn is a great laner. But then you get the team fights and it's just like, yeah, it, it, it's not as great. So overall for this series, I'm gonna say 3-1 FlyQuest over Team Liquid. I know a lot of people don't like 3-1 answers, but I legitimately think this playoffs, like in general across all teams, is gonna be closer than people give it credit for. 3-1 score lines with all four close games, I think is going to be a common theme that we will see, so long as somebody doesn't come out and emerge as just like utter stomping people. But there is a world where TL can win this series. In my opinion, that comes through bot lane. That also comes from APA stepping up to play Jensen's level. Beyond that, everybody else I think can have their pop-off moments and has already shown it for the most part. So what this means, based on my predictions, in case you didn't watch the full 100 Thieves C9 video, I am predicting 100 Thieves 3-1 over C9, which means we will get a Cloud9 versus NRG rematch on Saturday. The finals rematch from summer in the loser's bracket. And this is when butterfly logic comes into play for predicting a playoff bracket. You have to predict storylines and trends that are gonna happen. And one thing that I continuously like is the fact that, okay, teams that drop down from the upper bracket to the lower bracket, there's one of two things that can happen. Either A, they got that warm up series first time around, and yeah, it gets them going, it gets them ready for loser's bracket, and then they make a run. But the flip side of that is you mentally break. And with C9, I'm specifically looking at them and saying, yeah, this is a team where everybody's expecting them, including themselves, to bounce back in best of fives and be better. And if they get smashed by 100 Thieves or beaten 3-1 in a very convincing way, their mental might be gone. And all it takes is NRG on a hot day, and NRG can beat them. I know that didn't happen in the regular season. I know it feels like they're less likely to turn it on than C9 is come playoffs, but I, dude, I just get this weird feeling. I have not liked the way that Cloud9 has played this split at all. But the thing is that Jojo Pune's just playing stupidly well, and I feel like Jojo Pune can drag them, drag everybody else inting to a playoff series win, especially against Palavox, who has notably been struggling the last few weeks. He has not looked good. Same thing with Dokla and, and FBI and Huhi. While they were carrying games early, they weren't able to make up for some of the problems that Palafox and Dokla were having later on, despite still getting leads in lane and obviously playing pretty well themselves. God, I keep trying to talk myself out of this because this is going to be such a bold prediction, but I think I'm going to stick to it. 3-2 NRG over Cloud9. Cloud9 drops out fifth, six this split. Which leaves one final series in Team Liquid versus Dignitas. Uh, I really don't think there's much to say here. Even though Dignitas showed an interesting look against NRG where they played through bot lane, got Jinx ahead, and Jinx was able to carry, I think TL has just shown a few more pieces that they can put together. Rich and Dove, while they have their moments, I haven't honestly been all that impressed. They're solid. They're middle of the pack, but I wouldn't say like they're up there. I would give Impact the advantage over Rich. I would 
probably pick Dove over APA right now. Jungle, I would not pick XU over Umti. And bot, lane, bot lane's actually pretty even. I think this series is going to be closer than most people think. But the experience that TL does have in best of fives, given that it is going to be an equal matchup in my mind, I've just seen TL turn it on uh, from this position before. I think I'm feeling pretty comfortable going TL 3-1 over Dig. Now from here, I won't preview the rest of the matchups, but I will give you exactly how I think this playoffs is going to play out. You would then have a 100 Thieves versus FlyQuest uppers bracket or upper bracket matchup, of which I think FlyQuest wins that 3-1. 100 Thieves getting their first lick in on FlyQuest. Loser semifinal between Team Liquid and NRG rematch of the semi-final from last year but i think this time tl actually has the weapons necessary to be able to beat them out team liquid takes it over nrg 3-2 this then sets up the rivalry game between 100 thieves and team liquid which has been close every single time that they played and i don't expect this to be any different if they're playing in a best of five i expect it to get sloppy to get a little bit messy for some people to throw it's just the nature of these two teams against each other and it's one of the best rivalries that we have 3-2 though 100 thieves leading to a rematch of 100 Thieves versus FlyQuest in the finals, of which I do think FlyQuest... Did I say the right teams there? Yeah, FlyQuest, 100 Thieves, I think FlyQuest takes it 3-1. FlyQuest wins uh, the entire split. Looks pretty good in best of fives, but notably 100 Thieves still makes it to MSI. Now, by all means, as a 100 Thieves fan, do I want us to win the entire thing? Yeah. Am I intentionally picking uh, them to lose this series, hoping that it reverse psychology gets them the win? Yes, but like, I have to like... In the same way that like whenever I vote for MVP and vote for All-Star, I have to like take the bias 100 Thieves cap off to be able to say it. I have to do the same here. And realistically, as of right now, we've seen nothing that can indicate that anybody's going to beat uh, FlyQuest other than Cloud9. But I don't think we ever get that matchup. And because of that, FlyQuest just goes on to win it all. But that's it for me. The next time that we talk, we will already have four playoff series already in. The pit will cover uh, how wrong some of my predictions were. This should be fun to look back at, and hopefully I am wrong on some of them. I'd like to see some upsets. I think the bracket that I predicted, other than Cloud9 dropping out pretty early, is stock standard for the most part. But we'll see. I'm excited. Let me know what matchup you are most excited for this weekend. Is it 100 Thieves Cloud9? I'm assuming it is, but if it's not, tell me what other one you're looking forward to and why. I'll catch you later. Adios. Mm -hmm.